Back again, Cranky Yankee here to give you the Brazilian Grand Prix breakdown for the FP2 session. Back again, like Ferrari speed. So we're going to talk about that. I'll keep it nice and brief like the last video. Um, but I just want to get you guys ready for the qualifying for Saturday as a whole, FP3 and qualifying. It's going to be really good. Uh, it's tight all the way through. Um, and then we're going to talk about race pace. But uh, if you're new to the channel, make sure if this is the first time you see seen this video i like to talk about f1 videos onboard videos keep you updated with F f1 news and on race weekend give you all the session summaries the brief summaries so if that's what you're into subscribe and if you're subscribed i really appreciate it and you guys mean a lot and you guys have been able to keep like the things like the albon video stick which it's stood up for a while so that's really uh, i'm really appreciative of that so let's get into it we've got um when we break down the actual session results, and you can see the blog in the description, you've got FP2 session led by the Ferraris, of course, like I just mentioned, separated by a couple thousands. Uh, they did quite a few laps this time around. Um, you got Vettel leading with Clark this time, Verstappen splitting uh, the Ferrari and the Silver Arrows. You've got Valtteri leading Lewis in fourth and Lewis in fifth. The times that separate them are very very small so as you can see there lewis hamilton at a 109 spot 440 compared to vettel's 109 217 and that actually continues all the way down to about p9 less than a second separate them essentially but anyways kevin magnuson will keep going kevin magnuson p6 the the haas has never what's impressive about this is i mean it is a p6 but we've seen this before i i've always affectionately call him the quality king magnuson i mean maybe not this year in terms of qualification but magnuson has always been pretty quick like this it's really the race pace so the ricardo of daniel of uh the renault of daniel ricardo is right behind kevin magnuson at a 110 194 kimmy raikkonen just behind ricardo and then albon is a distant way off a good distance and way off from his teammate verstappen i don't he didn't really have the best session to be honest with you it it likely was his wreck which i mentioned got to stay up because you guys support so i'll link to that in the description but this was not album session honestly it was decent at the start but just too much there's too big of a gap between him and verstappen at a 109 351 versus an album's uh, fp2 time of 110 275 carlos saints rounds out uh, the top 10 you've got nico holkenberg uh, coming in in 11th who's the 2010 pulse hitter so the times go on, so like I said, about a second separate 1 and 9, and about half of that separate P10 to P19. And there's only 19 because George, or uh, Robbie Kubica, two laps in, what is it recorded? Yeah, he's recorded here at two laps, had a pretty big wreck. I'll do my best to get it up for you guys. I can't promise you it'll stay. Again, they, they're especially um, careful about letting uh, Kubica's content through it for whatever reason so i'll try i'll try to get that on board for you guys but this is going to be a very very tight qualifying session like i said half a second separate those in the bottom part of the field and it's it's has everything to do with the fact that it's a short uh trick it's a short circuit and short track but also the weather i think people are a little bit more cautious you'll see them start getting on the pedal a little bit more tomorrow so if you really want to have an idea of what qualifying is going to look like just check out fp3 that's the shortest time between the sessions so it's not like if you catch fp3 I mean, those who are watching that are probably going to watch qualifying any, both of them qualifying too. So um, just check out this video if you want to know what happens. It, it lets you sleep a, kept, a couple, two hours later, depending on where you are in the world, or just hang out and do nothing for two hours more. So I'll give you the update uh, tomorrow for the FP3 session, but the qualifying should be really, really tight. And like I said, uh, Kibitza had a wreck. Both of the Toro Rosso's had problems. It looks like Gasly's was more uh, of an engine failure, whereas Daniel Kvyat's was, he went into the wall. It looked maybe a power line, or not a power line, like an oil, there was like, like an oil line a cut or something, because he did have a lot of smoke. And when you, it was right at the exact same place as Albon's. So I already did try to get that one up. I couldn't get it, the, the onboard. But if you've seen the onboard video of Albon, then you've seen the onboard video of Kvyat. They're the, basically the exact same thing uh, where he went off. The difference was Kvyat's, uh, his center console on his wheel, it was off. It shut off completely. So it made me think it was a, some, whatever happened prior to his uh, shunt right where Albon 
happened to go off too. It made it sound like it made it look look like all things considered that it was a technical issue that led him to that. So if he had a failure and then he really couldn't control the car after that, that's really not his fault. And uh, that's why I wanted to get that video up for you guys. So if I can, I will. That's basically the biggest news of the day. Verstappen was having a, a DRS issue. It looks like it's going to be perfectly fine. Um, but uh, other than that, the only other thing worth noting is that Valtteri looks a little bit more chippy out of nowhere. This is not, I've never really seen Valtteri do this, um, but I think uh, he got in the way pretty badly of Hamilton, which maybe I, it was an accident probably. Um, and I know Valtteri fans take it easy. I'm not saying he did it on purpose. But he turned around and did it the same thing, just kind of lollygagging right on the racing line on the border for Vettel, like a, less than a lap later. So not really like Valtteri. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. The second one wasn't good. It didn't look good. So let me know in the comment section below if you caught that. What do you think of that? But um, otherwise, yeah, who do you guys have uh, that is going to look the best for qualifying? You've seen both of these videos. Take a guess. I mean. Comment in the section below what you I mean your guess is as good as mine. If you're asking me and I sit here and think about it, what I think in I guess it helps to look at the race pace. So um, if we look at the race pace analysis, this is on soft tires, and again, there's a lot of things at play. You gotta think about averages. Some of these drivers went different lengths, but if we do our best to just compare a dirty rough calculation, we've got Hamilton looks the best as a race car. In terms of the race pace and then it looks like the ferrari at interlagos the the ferrari looked the best over one lap and i mean you guys may hear that and go yeah what's new but you know we got to remember that it look uh now that we know for sure that leclerc is on the spec three he's i mean he's going to be back to his normal pace i think ferrari's going to be back to the normal pace i did do an analysis looking at um you guys know i am no ferrari defender but i do want to defend them and i'll do it in another video but when people are accusing them of cheating and I'll look at the race pace once the FIA cracks down, I kind of disagree with that. And I looked at the numbers, so I'll, I'll post a video about it, but likely, but here is the pace analysis. You can, again, you can get it in all in the blog, Hamilton at a one thirty one thirteen spot three average. And then Verstappen and Vettel are really close. I really do think this might be a little bit of uh, justice served for Verstappen, Verstappen uh, this race. I think he's, probably gonna sit on the pole i think he's gonna pull it out of his hat i think the ferrari both of the ferraris will be looking um probably on top of the timesheet throughout the entire qualifying session and i think verstappen will put one together there at the end i think botas will be just like this suggests probably a distant fourth in this race kind of like leclerc at the u.s grand prix and hamilton will be vying out he might even win this race based on some strategy last year he got lucky with uh oh well some people will call it a conspiracy but <laughs> you got Ocon taking out hamilton and uh, it's just as simple as that. But either way, um, I think Hamilton could win on a strategy play. But it, Verstappen, I think, is going to be triple uh, hungry for this race more than he's ever been. Not that he's, he's you know ever lacking in that field. But I really do think this is probably going to be his race because this is probably going to be his qualifying session. And whoever takes qualifying, there's a good chance. I don't think anyone's ever won uh, not on the first row, or at least they haven't in a while. So we'll see what happens. But uh, make sure to check out the FP3 video if you want to save yourself about, you know, it's only an hour long session, but I can do it in about seven minutes, six minutes. So uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow for FP3 qualifying and check out the live timing sheet. I'll leave the link in the description, but I've been doing that. I've been leaving it up and just playing it live. So if you're into that kind of data, I'll leave it there for you. But thanks for checking this out and I'll see you guys here soon.